I'm here at the fabulous Halfwin Resorts with Sheila Johnson. The last time we were here, I think it was like a mere weeks before the borders closed. Who yes. knew? We were, you know, getting ready to cut the ribbon, as it were, to the eclipse wing of the property. And um, then things just went awry. The whole world shut down. The whole world checked out. Yes. Except us, of course. We kept working yes. behind the scenes. Yes, yes. And um, now... We're in a brand new place because it is opened. If you look across at the magnificent Caribbean Sea, but you've been up to a lot apart from the fact that you have just been named the CEO of the year. So congratulations. Well, thank you very much. And it was... a happy new year to you too. Yes, happy new year to you. And you've also been in acquisition mode. Absolutely. Since we have spoken, we have picked up three new acquisitions and it was Aspen Institute in Aspen, Colorado. We have the hotel in Washington, D.C. And then the third hotel, the Anguillas, the new Aurora, it used to be old Cuisinart, oh. the Cuisinart property. Mm -hmm. And Dick Schultz is the buyer of that property, and he used to be the CEO and founder of Best Buy. Oh. Yeah, so this is an incredible investor who has the bandwidth to really make the Aurora property probably the best in the Caribbean. He's building an amphitheater, a whole entertainment facility, pickleball, tennis. Whoa. Golf course is unbelievable. Um, and he's tapped you for the management contract. Oh, yes. Fantastic. Yes. And it is really doing well. It is just an amazing property. From the moment I set foot in Anguilla, yes. I fell in love with it. Mm. Peace, quiet, 4,600 people live there. And... Um, there's one, two, three, four incredible resorts right there. Washington, D.C., it was the Mandarin Hotel. It was built back in the early 2000s. We have bought it, mm -hmm. and we are going to be renovating it, and it's right on the Potomac. We've got some exciting things that are going to happen there, from instituting a jazz club to a wonderful patisserie. I've got an incredible chef coming in. How do you go about choosing the prop? properties? Um, I like to look at the location because destination for a location is very important. I want to make sure we're close to an airport or any way that our guests can get there easily. I also look at the larger part of the region. You know, what's going to draw visitors not just to the hotel, but what else can they do there? So I don't want to be in the middle of nowhere. nowhere. So that's important. So that is key. You were not always in the hospitality industry. Oh, no. This is my third act in life. Exactly. So for those people who want to recap, I mean, you know, you are you're the co-founder of BET. Yes. That was my so, second act. Oh. My first act, I was a concert violinist. That's right. And I played in orchestra, symphony orchestras. Mm. I got my degree in performance and in education. And um, it's really the foundation of my life, the arts. It's the creative part where I can um, not just run a hotel, but able to bring so much more, more to, the table. to the business, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'll give you an example. We have a, we just celebrated the 10th year of our Middleburg Film Festival. We have had over 40 films that have been nominated for Golden Globes, the SAG winners, and they're now going to the Oscars. But they call us, we're the little, we're the film festival that's kicked the can down the road. It's a play on words of the Cannes Film Festival. So, um, Everybody has come in from celebrities to directors. I was able to really celebrate musicians that have been really the unsung heroes behind these movies. I wanted people to listen to their music and how it really um, shapes a movie. Absolutely. To understand that. And it's never been done before, but we're doing it. And when are you going to do this? We've already done it. We just finished our 10th year. Whoa. Yeah. So we're working on the 11th year. And then, but what, as they say, what do you do for an encore? Just, just, <laughs> exactly. keep, just keep, whatever just keep, I come just up moving. with. I've had the American Ballet Theater come in. Mm. So I'm trying to give my guests an experience. It's just not just doing it for anything. Yeah. From the family reunion 
to bringing the arts and really exposing our guests, but more importantly, exposing our employees. So your music background really laid that foundation yes, for you. Yes, it did. You. Yes. Right. It wasn't just you being bored, not knowing right. what to do. So you decided, OK, I'm going to be a, a you know, a Yeah. I mean, the design work is important. I mean, even the designs in Salamander, I did that design. Okay. You know, I designed the sheets. I designed everything. Really? The thing that has really attracted me to Jamaica such a rich culture yes, yes. and the arts here are incredible mm. they are unique you have a culture here that is when i walk into this property it's just it's just there it embraces you mm. it inspires you and that is what is so special about this place so your first act and your second act yes how do you segue well i guess it's a comfortable segue from you know the orchestra, as it were, yeah. to music. To music. As a co-founder of BT. Yes. But then your third act. Yes. Is I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure if this is going to be your final act. I suspect it might not I be. I just don't know what's <laughs> going to happen. But your third act. Yes. Your most spectacular, perhaps, the hospitality. Yeah, it really world. is. Yeah. This has been fun. I'm still able to be creative in this third act and bring in my new ideas. I've got an exceptional executive team who are the nuts and bolts. They run the numbers, they do all that. That I can't do. I no. know where my limitations are. <laughs> and what but must. I know I can give them the creative vision of what I want. What do we acquire as far as growing the company? What do I want it to look like when we start doing the renovations? How do we connect the dots? How do we make it all work? because I want our guests to come to salamander properties. So when they walk in the door and they go, we're back in a salamander oh, party, no matter where we are, we have people right here who are already at Half Moon that are from Washington, D.C. And I, you know, I run into them all the time. They say, we're going to every one of the salamander properties. So when you, I remember when you decided to go into the hospitality industry, mm -hmm. there was a little bit of pushback, if my memory serves me correct. <laughs> And being kind. No, you're being very kind. But you're this an Aquarian, is a, so I know you don't worry about This is a history pushing. lesson, especially yes. for people of color. Yes. I went into it with my eyes wide open, naive. I forgot I was south of the Mason-Dixon line. Went did down. You, did you <laughs> I didn't think that I'm way. Just teasing you. you know what I'm yes, saying? Yes. And uh, when I acquired 340 acres of Pamela Harriman's property and looked at it, and then looked at a town that was bankrupt. Yes. How I could be an anchor in that town and change and put a business model in there and change the thought process of people living there. It was so insular and so isolated, but it needed to become much more diverse. So it was really important that I was able to create that resort there. And I got resistance. I mean, it was probably one of the most painful yes. racial fights yes. of my life. I mean, I had been through a lot, but that was a 10-year fight. I and I finally got it pushed through and won by one vote. One, one vote. vote. And when people say every vote matters, it really does. Yes. By one vote. That one vote carried me over the finish line. After 10 years, you were not exhausted. You didn't say to yourself, well, perhaps it's oh, the wrong no. decision. I was, that fire went right up under me, and I'm telling you, I was ready to go again. So and you I, mentioned fire. Yes. And there's a book coming out. Yes, I have a book coming out in the fall called Walk Through Fire. Walk Through Fire. Yeah. And it's a lesson for both men and women that adversity is important in your life because it's the only way you're going to become stronger and be able to reach your goals. It's going to give you the motivation to be able to move forward. We look forward to that book. I can't yes. wait to read it myself because yes. your, your entire story has really been, your life has been an inspiration yes. for me. Thank you. Me included. What would you, you know, as a successful woman entrepreneur, you know, the first billionaire, mm -hmm. black billionaire in the, in the United States mm -hmm. of America, when somebody looks at you and says, well, you know, how can I replicate? How can I, how did you do it? What are some of the, what are some of the things that you can share 
to bring me along the journey. What would you what would you say to that? First of all, I just believe and I tell this to young women, young men, you got to know who you are. If you don't know who you really are and what gets you out of bed in the morning, what is your passion in life? If you can't answer those questions, that's not even a starting point. But you need to find a focus in your life, know who you are, what you want to be, and they have to have patience. This did not come overnight. I'm not going to tell you how old I am. I think you know how old I am. I do know. But I am just I do know telling you how, how, how many times you've been around the world. That's right. But it has but, taken but a long I'm not time. You, but when you say patience, you're speaking to a generation that has barely it, made it through COVID, the lockdown, and you're talking about patience. Is that a bad word now? Are you still? No, I even have to still learn patience. Okay. Because there's times when um, you know, just even acquiring the DC hotel, I am impatient because I know what I want. I'm waiting for these designers to clarify my vision so I can approve it and we can get started. This is going to be a long process, but the people in Washington, D.C. are so excited that a black woman owns this hotel and they said, we want to support you. I said, you can still come in, but we're going to have renovations going on. <laughs> um, well, you know, fabulous. and we're getting ready to ce celebrate Martin Luther King yes. on Monday and we've got gospel choirs coming in. Ooh, I want to wow. bring the D.C. culture the African-American culture. I want this hotel to be a beacon of what D.C. is all about because we're losing our identity there. And With I patience. think it's important. Yeah, you got to have patience. With patience. Anything, any other, anything else? It all I mean, comes the patience, up under patience. Okay, because, it's, well, I would imagine because after your 10-year wait to even start and by one vote, patience. Yeah. Now, um, success obviously is not an overnight thing. But no, what, it's not. I mean, you, you are successful. Being there, done that, kind of everything. What gets you out of bed? Now? There is there's not one day that is the same. And it depends on my schedule, and that's what I get out of bed every morning. I, I, have, I set up these little mini goals every day of what I have to do, what I need to get done. What is it I'm going to do that's going to end my day and say, all right, I got everything done that I wanted to get done. Okay. That's what gets me out of bed in the morning. Yeah. And what do you say to your children when they look at you? The jury's still out on that, <laughs> I'll tell you. Being a mother yes. and being a businesswoman is very tough because they do look to me for oh. everything. And I try to motivate them and talk to them. Sometimes they don't want my advice, and there's other times they go, Mom, I need your advice on this. But it's more of listening to them and trying to understand what they want in life and what they need in life. I love that, what they need. And, yeah, what they need. And it's not materialistic. It's more of support of their ideas. Are they in the business with you? My son is a menswear designer, so he's still on the creative yeah, and he has his um, major showrooms in Milan. Nice. So we will go to Fashion Week at the end of February. My daughter is just now a retired equestrian. Yes, because I know she loves. Yes, right. So she's to trying to figure out what she wants to do in her next life. Mm. So um, they're both wonderful children. Just absolutely incredible. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. So yeah. any future plans for the Salamander managed half moon here? continue to build our client base you know i mean you see how busy it is now you the thing that I yes from. i think more than anything is i'm glad the tourism business has come back mm. you know i left anguilla it's booked this place is booked. booked and that's what gives all of our employees the comfort that they know that we're now in a sustainable business there have been there's been so much talk with um COVID, you know, that the industry was in trouble. I didn't even think that way. During COVID, yes. I saw it as an opportunity mm -hmm. to pivot, to do some deferred maintenance until we were ready to open up again, to make our resorts, our hotels even better. And to continue to tease over a website to say, look, this is what's happening here while you're at home. And, you know, 
the resort in in um, Middleburg, we were able to start something only two and a half months shut down. But we on 340 acres, it's wide open. We felt safe. We were checked all the time by the right. state. Yeah. But we did something called schoolcation, mm -hmm. where the kids, you know, were had to learn at right. home. So we said to the families, bring your kids here, the whole first floor, we're gonna have computers, we got tutors down there. The parents could go to the spa, they could hit the bar, they could do whatever. We took the kids out horseback riding as a oh, nice. PE, they went on hikes. These are things of the creative side that you do to keep your business going, to keep it out there in the forefront. And I'll tell you, as soon as we reopened the doors, even during COVID, we were booked. It was our best year ever. Well, everything is back. Yeah. Booked, 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 booked. Yes. So, yeah. I know you're busy and I know you're a bit exhausted because you just came in from Anchorage. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. But thank you very much. It's All right. Speaking. It was wonderful speaking, speaking with you, too.